The month started at Newbury, where Nicky Henderson saddled the very exciting and well-talked-up Jericho de Repine, and it was time to see whether he could do his talking on the track. But this was impressive. He looks a class apart. Jericho du Repone. He could be very smart. He wins easily. The main thing was to give him the experience as well. Um, but I thought he was very genuine. But no, it rode like, a, like an OK race and um, he's gone through it well. Next at Newbury was the John Frankham Novices Chase, which saw the chase debut of Hermes Allen. A pleasing start to chasing for Hermes Allen, who wins the John Frankham Novices Steeple Chase in great style. Thrilled with that. Um, jumped well, travelled well, and learnt a lot, and you know, galloped on well. Marie's Rock was next in the long distance hurdle, but it was a battle of the veterans. Paisley Park now, staging a rally on the near side. Dashiell Drash is in front by a leg. Paisley Park trying hard to close, and he is closing. Dashiell Drasher though, sticks his neck out. Dashiell Drasher from Paisley Park, it's close between them. And then, you know, once he gets into a battle, I got into a battle turning in, and he does fight for you, you know, he does. Um, he really, he can quicken and keep quickening for quite a long time. And uh, I was just, I uh, could hear Paisley come in after the last, and he's just hung on, thankfully, yeah. Next up at Newbury was the Coral Gold Cup. And they're off. They race away then for the Coral Gold Cup. It's that's all right, Dino. Gavin Sheehan has passed every rival in this to win. Second of mile mission, Monbeck Genius, Al Dorado, Alan was next. It was just an absolute joy and a thrill, and when it's all paid off like that, it's when I, when I turned in, I knew I had a good chance, but you don't know because you're stepping up and tripping and everything, but the further I was going to the line, the more confident I was getting. You know, it's a dream come true. It's, you know, obviously, you know, as children, we used to we used to come and watch the race here, and, and um, you know, it's obviously local to, local to Lambourne. It's the... It's the sort of home fixture, as it were, for, for Lambourne, and you know, we, I was lucky enough to, to work for Nicky when um, when Trevolgan won, won, won it, and you know, to, to be here, standing here in the winners' enclosure, it's um, it's a dream come true. Three card break, strongly pressed by Corpus Cross on the near side, then Monty Starr and Nick Rocket, 150 yards to go, and it's stride for stride. Corpus Cross is getting up on the stand side. Next up was the eagerly anticipated clash between Firefox and Ballyburn, and it didn't disappoint. But it's Firefox all the way as they run deep in the closing stages. Firefox extends his winning run over second time flights, making all from Ballyburn. I was impressed with Gary, you know, we were worried the two miles might be sharp for him, but Jack said he's going to keep it simple, he popped out, he jumped brilliant, uh, you know, with his horse to second is very, very good. Um, it looked a proper race and you'd love the way the two of them down over the last two hurdles to gallop the whole way to the line, good race. Jalan Duderi is going to bring up a meaningful treble for Gordon Elliott in his late Uncle Willie's race. Jalan Duderi capping off a wonderful day for Gordon Elliott. It was an exciting start to Hatton's Grace Hurdle Day. 100 yards to go and New Berkring on the outside. Edges on close to the line. New Berkring from Cali Conti. I, I was happy with the posse I got. And when JJ came past me, it, it actually kind of helped me a little bit. It lit me up and I travelled well. And when I turned into stray, I thought, I thought I'd give Jack a little rattle. But you're always waiting for one of Willie's to come past you. But no, it was great. The Royal Bond Novice Hurdle was the first grade one of the day. And it went the way of in form Gordon Elliott. 100 yards to go, Farron Glory is getting up under uh, Jack Kennedy and the Royal Bond. But Willie Mullins fought back in the Drinmore. Farron to 50 and I am Maximus together. Let's be clear about it, it's been brushed aside. 150 yards to go. I am Maximus is opening up close to the finish. The winner of the Drinmore. If this is what it's all about, um, I really enjoyed like that's that's three grade one winners for Willie Mullins alone now for me um look I'm just very grateful to be, to be getting on them horses in the first place and to be riding ones with a chance is is brilliant the Hatton's grace was next Perry 
pass over in front from Tiapu. They got 200 yards to go. Tiapu on the outside, showing great resolve as they run up to the last 50 yards. This year is lowering the colours of Ampere Pass. Brilliant, yeah. Um, I think he's after improving on last year. He's a stronger horse this year, so. Uh, no, I got a great thrill out of that, and he's a uh, he's a pleasure to ride. Yeah. Look, it, it, obviously things change, but talking to me here today, I might go straight to the stairs. No running between. Maybe not. He runs well fresh. Over at Sandown Park was the two-day Tingle Creek meeting, and it started off with a very competitive novice chase on the Friday between Stay Away Fay and Giovinco. And heading up towards the line, it's Stay Away Fay to make it two wins from two starts over fences. It was good, good rattle over the last three anyway. I, both horses jumped great. They were very tough over the last three. And um, I'd probably say we just outstayed him, you know. The fighting fifth hurdle had been rearranged from Newcastle after it had fallen foul to the weather. And it was an old veteran that popped up. As up the hill they go, and it's not so sleepy. The veteran, he's going to win his second fighting fifth hurdle. This time, he'll win it on his own. The Betfair fighting fifth goes to not so sleepy. It was the Henry VIII novices chase next at Sandown, and it was a memorable first grade one for jockey David Newt. The patron is idling badly. Colonel Harry is giving it his all now. Colonel Harry is trying to get to Le Patron. Le Patron from Colonel Harry. Le Patron sees it out to win their bet for Henry VIII. It's, it's something I suppose you, you always achieve or try and aim to achieve, but uh, when it happens, it, uh, it feels a bit surreal, really. The feature of the Sandown card was the Tingle Creek Chase, where John Bond was looking to cement his position as the number one leading British two-mile chaser. At the final fence, John Bond's over in front. He landed a length and a half. Edward Stone will try and rally up the run-in. Haddock Stazovo back in third. It's John Bond ridden out by Nico de Bonville. He's got a couple of lengths in hand on Edward Stone. And the Betfair Tingle Creek chase goes to John Bond. Um, I've always thought he'd be a better horse or a better ground ready because he moves so well. Mm -hmm. And it would suggest that you know, he, he, he'd be, he might be better on faster ground. Not just better ground. Yeah. Um, but his jumping was very, very good. But to be fair, ever since then, all he's done is show us he's a two-miler. So I think we have to stick to that plan. I'm surprised, because after Cheltenham last year, I was sure that he wanted two and a half. But the, as it's planned out, we've got stuck in two. And I think that's where he's pigeonholed for now. Race two of the season over the Grand National Fences was here. This time, the Beecher Chase. As they head round the elbow with less than a furlong to go in this Boyle Sports Beecher Chase, and Shambard is clear. Coco Beach has moved into second place. He might be pressed for second position by Percussion, who's staying on, but nothing will press the leader. Shambard and Lucy Turner will win the Boyle Sports Beecher Chase. He's, just, he's been fantastic for me and um, I'm so pleased for Dave and Carol because they've been such great supporters of mine over the last few years so it's just nice to get them another big one on him. The Nava Novice Hurdle has always produced a good winner and this year's field didn't disappoint. The final flight and it's late steal from Lecky Watson. Better days ahead of mistake than stellar story. Now the hill, 150 yards to go, Slate steal. Rachel Blackmore all out from Lecky Watson and Paul Town and then stellar story. And better days ahead and up to the finish. It is Slate steal continuing his progression over flights and the tote Navin novice. The following day, we saw the return of our cool hero, El Fabiolo. Not the final fence in the hilly way, it's El Fabiolo. Fabiolo safely over, had an awkward landing, but is comfortably a good three lengths clear of Phil Dord, and then comes Rebel Gold. El Fabiolo is punched out on his return. Tough racing conditions, and even tougher for Willie Mullins in the interview. We've had three or four runners here today, and they were, I would say, shade disappointing. So um, I was worried going out there about him, but he got the job done. You know, he'll improve hugely, I think. Four days later, Willie Mullins sent out Blood Destiny on his chasing debut, a jumping performance to behold. Up the hill inside the final 200 yards and it's Blood Destiny. 
kicking away from Hartwood, Landrake and Spanish Harlem and it's Blood Destiny winning over fences on reappearance for Paul Townend and Willie Mullins looked natural as well. The following day, racing returned to Presbury Park and Dysart Enos put on a show against the boys. Brennan nudging away here to make sure, but the mayor, Dysart Enos, is beginning to draw away. She'll remain unbeaten over hurdles, a classy performance, and Paddy Brennan is one short of a career landmark. She's only going to get better. She doesn't, she's just a talented filly that doesn't realise how good she is. She's so easy to train. Fugitive got the better of long-term rival Il Rodoto in a December Gold Cup thriller. Got 150 yards to go, Il Rodoto. Fugitive gets to his quarters. Can he get past? Fugitive bearing down on Il Rodoto, who's finding plenty. There'll be flared nostrils either way. Fugitive and Il Rodoto. Another big win on a Saturday for high-flying jockey Gavin Sheehan. When I started turning in, I thought that you know, uh, I might get might get second or third and then jump for the second last. It, it all became apparent that I was kind of going to be in with a big shout and I jumped the last and I thought this is it. And I thought I'd go away and win. And he probably put his head in front and then just waited and I thought, oh. That's very but, him though, isn't it? Yeah, I said, it's going to be a long way to the line and <laughs> probably going to end up finishing second. Um, if he knows how to finish second, then he does, then he does win. But um, you, you need to look everything and to be fair to the horses, he's a brilliant horse. Broadway boy continued to improve and stamp down his festival credentials in a handicap. Broadway boy, three under through five, halfway up the running. Broadway boy grinding away in front. Sam Twist and Davis, all action. And this lightly raised progressive chaser, Broadway boy wins again. You just don't get horses that just, you know, are just faultless. He just doesn't do anything wrong ever. He's so straightforward, simple, easy to train, easy to feed, won't hurt anyone, just a very kind horse. December's action revolved heavily around the Christmas period, and the first day of festivities lived up to expectation. And they're off. First, it was the Corto Star Novices' chase. A competitive renewal with Lucinda Russell sending Giovinco, Paul Nichols sending Hermes Allen, and an unknown quantity in Ile Francais. Spectacular lead by Ile Francais. And again, he absolutely winged that fence. Ile Francais comes to it, another beautiful jump. Il est Francais at the next, and he flew the fourth from home. Il est Francais comes down towards the last. He flies over it clear. The Labrox Cordo star goes to Il est Francais. Il est Francais. Il est magnificent. He's potentially the best. Like, he has to go out there and prove it. Obviously, I've won Grand Steeps on other, like, so French, he won two Grand Steeps. This guy hasn't won any yet, so he has to go out there and prove it. But for me, he's potentially the, the best. The following race was the Grade 1 Christmas Hurdle, and Constitution Hill served up a Christmas cracker. But Constitution Hill, as he did 12 months ago, comes home to win the Christmas Hurdle in a canter. It was wonderful. I'm thrilled it's over. It's pretty, it's pretty nerve-wracking, to be honest. But um, he's a very, 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 very special horse. It was time for the main course, the King George the Sixth chase would it be shishkin would it be brave man's game would it be alaho or could there be a surprise final open ditch is the fifth from home and shishkin jumps it with a lead of just over a length over brave man's game the reigning champion in second alaho for island on the inside over the fourth from home shishkin by just over a length quick economical in the air to brave man's game in second on the inside, Alaho, shaken up for the first time by Paul Townend in third. There's a break now of five lengths back to the real whacker. Brogon has run his race. Hewick is trying to stay on. And now the field turns for home in the Labrox King George. And it's Shishkin and to go to Boyneville. Over Brave Man's game and Harry Coughlin in second. Alaho and Paul Townend in third. And then six lengths back to the real whacker. And Hewick, the third from home. Shishkin's lead is a late over Brave Man's game.
listen, I, I, I'm feeling great, I am. And um, it's great, it's just a, something that you dream of, so it is. And when you're a young lad, you think maybe someday you might have a runner on the day or you might have a runner in it, but you never think that you're going to win it. Have one runner, like, we have a small stable, we have one good horse and this is him. A magical day for all involved with Hewick. Over at Aintree, we had the first running of the Formby, formerly known as the Tolworth. Django Bay is now edging through to the lead with James Bowen, and it's Django Bay who will win the William Hill Formby. A first grade one success for James Bowen. I uh, finished third on top notch in a long walk one year, that's the closest I've been, but um, yeah, no, this is a hell of a lot closer, yeah. At Leopardstown, we were expecting fireworks from Fasal Vega, but it wasn't to be his day. On the run of the final fence, Fasal Vega picked off by Founder 50. Sharja is trying to make a race of it. The final fence, and it's Founder 50 over in front from Fasal Vega. My mate Mozzie from last over the top of the outside of Sharja, but it's Founder 50 and Jack Kennedy in the lead as they run up towards the finish. It is Founder 50. Founder 50 returns to winning ways at the racing post. Novice chase grade one. His horse we held and very high regard from the day he came came to Gordon's and uh, just you know, extremely disappointing the whole time but uh, seems to be putting it all together now and he was very good there today, he, he impressed me today. Yeah. With Fasal Vega disappointing there was no standout in the Arkel market, that was until Marine Nationale made his chasing debut. It's Marine Nationale and Michael O'Sullivan into the last and they pop it with a lead of three to four lengths over Fedham Footings and then walk with Paul Foot of Brazil blundered back and forth and on the run inside the final half furlong there's no laying a glove on Marine Nationale as the supreme winner is up and running straight away over fences for Michael O'Sullivan and Barry Connell. That was very straightforward, he's just a class horse. He's having a good blow now so I'd imagine he'll come on plenty for it. Um, but sure, look, I'm delighted. You know, which I, it's just an added layer of pressure. He's short price favourite for the Arkle. He's going to be a people's favourite, hopefully. Uh, I'd like to get that out of the way. You know, we come back here for the Arkle and then, then on to Cheltenham, hopefully, if everything's still OK. In the open two-mile grade one at Leopardstown, Captain Guinness had another brilliant opportunity to strike in grade one company. But it is Dino Blue extending her winning run in the Paddy's Rewards Club grade one chase for Mark Walsh and Willie Mullins. Another grade one for Willie Mullins, but the man of the moment was undoubtedly Gordon Elliott. It's Colwell Potter stepping up from the grade one Paddy Park, future champions, novice hurdle. Another grade one for Colin Tra. Listen, we've had an amazing couple of days. Uh, you know, the bunch of horses I have at the moment is unbelievable. And uh, just, you know, I wouldn't be able to sleep when I think of it. Over at Kempton, Nicky Henderson unleashed a real Triumph Hurdle contender. Well, a few hairy leaps on the way, a few moments of scare, but boy, he's talented. Sir Gino, easily. Factor file, going one better second time over fences for Mark Walsh, Willie Mullins and JB McManus. Back in Ireland, Factor file got off the mark over fences for the first time and stamped down his festival claims. With Tiufu already a standout stayers hurdle contender for Gordon Elliott and Rob Corr, it was interesting that Irish Point was taking up the Jack de Bromhead Christmas hurdle. Could he also book his place at Presbury Park in March? But it is Irish Point turning into a promising young stayer in the Jack de Bromhead Christmas hurdle. Wins another big one for Jack Kennedy and Gordon Elliott. This has probably been more classier than Tiufu. Tiufu's a real stayer, or this has just got a bit more, more class. The Savills chased promised plenty. Reputations on the line, Galapin de Champ needing to win, but who would come out on top? Into the straight with one fence left and coming wide. Galapin de Champ and Paul Tannen. Out on the left wing on the far side is Conflated and Sam Ewing. Jerry Colombe has tried to keep with them for Jack Kennedy. The final fence and it's Galapin de Champ has gone clear from Jerry Colombe. A mistake by Conflated has lost Sam Ewing, but it's Galapin de Champ 
returning to the top of the staying division in the summers. The Gold Cup winner is back for Paul Turner and Willie Morris. A sight for sore eyes. As I said, he had, an he had questions to answer and, and I think he'd done it today. You know, he jumped Paul, wanted to change tactics, they wanted to jump him out in front, give him plenty of daylight, let him enjoy himself down over the force and see what happens. And it worked. You could, when I saw him jumping the force, I was very happy that Paul had probably made the right decision. We didn't know, we still had two or nearly three miles to go at that stage, but um, the horse enjoyed himself and that was key to it. There was another grade one win for Willie Mullins on the day, but it wasn't short of controversy. But down to the final fence, it's Gaelic Warrior out clear, jumps at Spring Hill, clear of Elliot Tom, Tom in second, third, I know the way you're thinking, and fourth is American Mike, but this is a saunter in the park for Gaelic Warrior who makes all. Despite the impressive victory, it was the post-race spat between Danny Mullins and Patrick Mullins which made the headlines. I told Danny, Danny going out, he said, there will be a gap on my inside second last, do not come for it. He hasn't listened to me. Um, luckily, he hasn't got the two of his feet, um, but it didn't matter. How good is he, Patrick? Everything he does is so impressive. Look, he's only been beaten twice. That's in Shetland going left-handed. Shetland doesn't really suit him. Racing well inside the final furling and a half, and it is Ballyburn. On the final day of the Leopardstown Christmas Festival, it was much more like it from Ballyburn on his second start over hurdles. It was a proper performance today, the benefit of the run, step up and trip, still a little bit in my hands, but that's his kind of way of galloping with his head down and probably looks keener than he's been. Ballyburn wasn't the only winner for Paul Townend on that day, and the next one came in grade one company. It's Grange Clare West, the leader. Over the last from Corbett's Cross and then Floating Porter. Flanking Manoeuvre is next and then Favori de Chondo. Racing inside the final furlong. Grange Clare West is making a big statement in the Nevin Hotel's novice chase. Oh, I thought he was going to be the second spring classical dream today. Uh, so now he's, he's stepped up into the... You know, he stepped up to the first string, so uh, he looks very, very good. He, he looks, he, he probably looks today like what he promised to be when he was bought. The final grade one of the Leopardstown Christmas Festival was the Matheson Hurdle, which saw Willie Mullins pitch his two two-mile hot shots, State Man and Impere Pass, against each other. That off in the Madison Hurdle Grade 1. Coming down to the final flight, and it is State Man by a couple of lengths to Ampere Pass, and then it goes in rain. On the run in, it is State Man, the leader from Ampere Pass, who's trying hard, but it's not hard enough. The Madison has the same ring to it as last year. A State Man follows up for Paul Town and then Willie Mullins. I love the way State Man galloped the whole way to the line. Uh, to me, that's improvement. He's improved from last year. We saw a future star in the bumper. Shalom Duderi from Redemption Day on the outside, who's now been gone after to try and come with a run. But it's Shalom Duderi finding, finding, finding on the run up to the finish. Shalom Duderi is fighting off Redemption Day to make it two out of two and the plus final winners. This is the proper horse. Uh, you know, we knew he was good. We knew he improved well from the last day. I just loved the way he stretched from, from two down to the line. Uh, yeah, he's one to look forward to. December the 30th, 2023, saw the last day of Newbury on the racing TV channel for a good while. Jericho de Repone started the card off with a bang. And it's Jericho de Repone easing clear. Secret Squirrels rallying to good effect. Takes second now from Paradias in third. Jericho de Repone, a comfortable win. Conditions for the Grade 1 shallow hurdle looked tough and they proved to be very testing. Onto the run-in, Captain T chased by the jukebox man and look away trying to come back. Captain Teague's really, really weary. Slow motion finish to the cello. Captain Teague, Johnny Hughes still staying on late in the day, but Captain Teague bravely sees it out. That furlong and a half from the last of the line was probably the longest I've uh, ever known it around here because I could hear the others coming, but I couldn't see them. Um, but uh, he handles that ground really well. He's got his jumping together now and um, he's definitely going the right way. Four wins on the trot in the shallow hurdle for Paul Nichols brought the end of Newbury time on racing TV. It is truly a, a grade one venue for steeple chasing, hurdling and flat racing. It's been a great pleasure and a real privilege to cover racing from Newbury on this channel through so many of those great moments. As you were saying, Big Bucks, Denman, Cordo Star, Nichols today, Plus Change, 
uh, Pluse La Meme shows. Frankel's demolition job in the lock engine. Baid brilliant last year as well. Uh, but the winds change as they often do in televised horse racing. And I can just say uh, we've loved it. Best of luck to Sky Sports Racing when they take over from the middle of January. Thanks to all the team at Newbury, from all of us on Racing TV, it's goodbye for now. The final day of 2023 had racing at Punchestown and we were introduced to a possible triumph hurdle contender in Stormheart. It is Stormheart at the last and at the wings. In second is Ginny Macaroni who hit it hard and then hey whatever and on the run in. It is Stormheart, useful on the flat of France, makes a winning jump stable for Paul Townend and Willie Mullen. It was impressive, uh, it got messy down the back. Um, but he took on the next couple of hurdles well after getting a fright. A little big, but he quickened well off the bend and pleasant surprise how the manner in which he done it to be honest. Also on the card, champion bumper and Ballymore winner Sir Gerhard capped off a brilliant 2023. Sir Gerhard is shining back over hurdles for Paul Town and Willie Mullen. Paul Nichols was on top of the British Trainers' Championship at the end of 2023, accumulating over £1.5 million in prize money from 68 winners. A brilliant season for Venetia Williams had her fourth, with Fergal Bryan also continuing his momentum in fifth. Sean Bowen had a 29-winner lead in the British Jockeys' Championship over Harry Cobden. It looked a two-way battle with Sean Bowen very much on the up. In the Irish Trainers' Championship, Gordon Elliott found himself on top with 3.1 million euros in prize money. That resulted in Jack Kennedy leading the way in the Irish Jockeys' Championship with a resounding 86 winners, 23 more than Paul Townend in second. The final flight of the champion hurdle, Constitution Hill. Hold your breath, he's long and he's over clear. And it's Constitution Hill, one of the hurdling greats. Honeysuckle is responding to the calls of Rachel Blackmore and she'll end with a victory. Honeysuckle has done it.